Hello guys, welcome to my first video. Today we will see together how to resolve the Zebra puzzle using C Sharp. This puzzle is also known as Einstein Reader or Einstein Puzzle and have a severe variation with different items and conditions. You can easily modify the source code to develop a different version. Today we will use Visual Studio 2015, the free version, but you can use any other IDA. There are several examples on how to solve this puzzle, but some of them use not standard library or are not simple to understand. For this reason, I'll try to explain, starting from zero, step by step, how to solve this puzzle. We will start creating a new project. A simple console application is enough. The framework version that we will use is not so important. Let's insert a name and we will be ready to start. We can remove unnecessary directives also to prove that we are using only standard library. First of all, we start with the declaration of our enumerators. During the development, it will be simpler to refer to names instead of numbers, and all the source code will be more comprehensible. We are inserting houses, nationalities, drinks, smokes and pets. There are five alternatives for each category of the information. As you have noticed, we are inserting all items in alphabetical order and we are assigning them a value that starts from 1 and arrives to 5. It's enough to declare only the first value and the other will be assigned automatically. We are almost ready to go ahead to the next step. Don't forget to save to avoid to rewrite again all the code. There are five houses, so we need to define our position and we need to calculate all the possible combination. We will create the method combinations that take the positions and return an array with all the possible combinations. Imagine to have five elements A, B, C, D, A and that you need to calculate all the possible combinations. 
The simplest way to do this is to start with an element and continue to consider the other elements separately one by one. Of course, at the beginning I have only the element A, so I have a single combination. When I add the second one, the element B, I have two possible combinations because I need to insert the new element in each position, so I have BA and AB. Adding a third element, the working will remain the same, but now I have two starting combinations, so I need to insert the new element in each position for each combination. So for the combination BA, I'll generate the new combination CBA, BCA and BAC, while for the combination AB, I'll generate the combinations CAB, ACB and ABC. With three elements, I'll have six different combinations. Adding the fourth element, I'll start from six different combinations and I'll arrive to 24. At the final step, I have 120 combinations. Simple? Yes, now we need just to write a function that will do this. We start the combinations method that take the position in input and return an array of string with all the possible combinations. We define a list of strings that will contain the combinations. Create a cycle for each position, so our method can work with any number of elements, not only five. We are considering each element one by one inside the single string. If the combinations list is empty, we will take a single element as single combination. Do you remember A? Otherwise, we need to define a new combination list that we will use for our calculations. Now it's time to create a cycle for each current combination and inside it another cycle for each position. In this way we can calculate the new combinations. The cycle don't consider the last position, so we need to add another combination when we are out. After the calculation, we must copy the new combination over the old ones. In this way, the next element can continue with the current combinations. At the end, we convert our list of strings in an array of strings. Now it's time to debug. 
consider the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as the elements A, B, C, D, A of the previous example. The first time, because it's the first element, will be talked as first combination. The second time, the method is cycling for the combination that was already calculated, was only one, and at the end, our current combination are updated. When the third element arrive, works in the same way, there was only more combination to process. Now, let's put a breakpoint. We go directly at the end. As you can see, we have 120 combinations, from 0 to 119. At this point, we can start to write the brute force code. We will cycle for each possible combination, 5 items that have 120 combinations each one. That means more than 24 billions of possibilities. We create 5 nested cycles. Uh, starting from the nationalities, passing for the houses, the drink, uh, the smoke, and arrive to the pets. The order is important if you want to find one of the fastest solutions, otherwise don't worry. It's arrived at the time to write a routine that will check every single requirement. The idea is to create a method that takes an input the current combination and the, re the requirement number to check if a condition is matched, returning a Boolean value. The code that we will write for condition number 2 will be used for almost all requirements. Basically, it's a simple comparison, also if it isn't so simple to write it.
we will use index off to search inside the houses and find the position of the red one and then we will use it to read the nationality linked using substring. At the end we can match it with the nationality that we are looking for, the Englishman. We have converted the enum value to a string to simplify the search. We can insert the requirement check inside the houses cycle. For this requirement we can make a cut and pass of the previous one and then change some values. Pets is the innermost cycle, so we need to insert the condition there. Also the condition number 4 is very similar and also in this case we can take advantage of cut and past. We must insert the condition check inside the drinks cycle.
very similar to condition number four. And also in this case we will insert the condition sec inside the drink cycle. Now the check is a bit different. Greenhouse is to the right of Ivory House. This means that I can calculate the difference between the two positions and if the result is one means that the requirement is matched. We need to insert the condition check inside the house cycle. Also condition number 7 is one of the most common, nothing more to add. Put the condition check inside the path cycle. Condition number 8 is like the previous one.
we need to insert the condition check inside the smoke cycle. Milk is drunk in the middle house. In our strings, the position goes from 0 to 4, so the middle house can be retrieved using substring on position number 2. We are going to insert this check inside the drinks cycle. Like in the previous condition, also in this case we will use the string position. The first house can be found on position 0, because we said before that position goes from 0 to 4. We can put this condition check inside the first cycle, because all the nationalities are involved. The man who smoke Chesterfield life in the house next to the man with the fox. This means that we don't know if he live to the left or to the right, so we can make a difference like we made before, but we need to check the absolute value.
to insert this condition check inside the path cycle. very similar to the previous check, so also in this case we need to calculate the absolute value of the positions. And also in this case the condition check goes inside the path cycle. Standard condition check. The check goes inside the smoke cycle. Also in this case it's the standard condition check. And also in this case the check goes inside the smoke cycle.
last condition check and also in this case we have the standard one we need to put the condition check inside the nationality cycle. I deleted for error the condition number 4 during one cut and paste, so I need to fix it. We have almost finished, uh, we need just to write a method that will display on the screen the solution when it's found. We will try to format the output to have a nice result.
we can call this new method from the inner cycle if uh, all the condition was met. The very last step is to calculate how fast is our new application, so we record the time at the beginning and at the end in order to calculate how many milliseconds are required to solve this puzzle. Now it's time to test it. Seems that I made some error in the easiest part, format the output. I put some bright line instead of bright, so I need to make some change. Now seems all fine. On my computer this puzzle was solved in 20 milliseconds, not bad, and what was your time? Isn't fundamental, but I noticed that I have wrote cruise instead of cools. I'm sorry, but I don't smoke and in any case this cigarette aren't available in my country. Just a second for fix it and run the application for the last time.
So you was arrived to the end of this video. Sorry if I ever bothered you for almost an hour. I hope at least that you have skipped the boring parts. This was my first video trying to explain something about programming in a language that wasn't mine. I had fun making it but it was also stressful because I spent hours trying to find the most appropriate software and formats. I hope that someone can find this fork useful. Tell me what you think about this video, of course if you need some information or help on this program just leave a comment. Also if you have an idea for new videos let me know.